Have you been looking for a Linux distribution that tries to mimic the look and feel of the Apple iPad? No, me neither, but there is a distribution out there that does try to do that. It's called Jingo S. It is a Chinese-based Linux distribution. It is based on Ubuntu, and it really tries to capture that iPad kind of look and feel. As you can see from the website here at jingos.com, you know, it looks like it's a really gorgeous kind of interface. Obviously, it's really meant for a touch device, a touch interface. I don't have a such a, a device to test this thing out on. I don't have any touchscreen monitors or anything. So today, I'm just going to take a look at it inside a virtual machine. And I'm just going to use the keyboard and mouse to play around with this thing. It's beta software anyway. They just recently put out the, the first i so that the general public can take a look at. It's Jingo S version 0 0.6, so it's not a 1.0 release yet. I will say, I, I know some people are going to have problems with the fact that this distribution is a Chinese distribution, but it is free and open source software. The one kind of sticking point with it, though, is that to be able to get the download link to grab the ISO, they do want you to sign up for a mailing list. They do want you to give an email address in order to then receive an email to get the download link for the ISO. Most people I know are going to have a problem with that. To be honest, I have a problem with that. If I wasn't taking a look at this distribution for purposes of this video, I would never give somebody out my personal email. What I suggest doing, there's a million services out there on the internet to set up a one-time temporary email just to quickly do something like this so go to one of these temporary email services grab a temporary email sign up to get the ISO and then you never have to worry about them potentially spamming you or selling your address or anything like that I definitely wouldn't give them a real email address so let me switch over here to a virtual machine and this may take a, a minute or two to load up here in the VM I'm using vert manager here and I'm using the vert IO drivers as far as a graphics driver inside vert manager I found that to work quite a bit better than the uh, QXL drivers the, the the default driver that vert manager uses as you can see, when it first booted up, it was running uh, some kind of check disk there. It was checking for errors. And then finally, of course, we get to our, I guess, kind of a login screen here. It's very mobile-like in its interface. Let me move my head out of the way. You can see we got the time and date here. And if I... I don't have a mouse. I have this circle. I guess that's imitating, you know, the, the point of a finger. You know, if I was dragging, for example, this arrow up like you would on a mobile device... You know, we get our keypad here. And from here, we need to unlock the screen. Now I'm just doing this off a of live ISO, and the default password is 123456. So I'm going to type 123456. And then you get the welcome screen. And user experience means a lot to Jingling. It's asking, do we want to agree to give Jingling, the company, uh, information about our system? So they're going to get, uh, I guess, the type of device we're running this on, information about our hardware, our MAC address, and various things. By selecting a, agree, you consent to the collection of your information by us. I'll go ahead and agree for purposes of this video. Then I get a congratulations stating that I am the 1,847th user of Jingo S. So I guess... You know, because everybody that is using this ISO agrees, you know, to be a part of this collection of information. They know exactly how many people have tried the ISO, and I guess I'm uh, 1,847 in the list. So I'm going to click Get Started, and here we are really inside the interface. The first thing you notice as soon as you get into the actual desktop environment here is that it's a very mobile kind of interface. You see you have uh, the dock here at the bottom. I'm not exactly sure what Linux dock they're using. It could be something like uh, Docky or maybe Latte dock or, or something like that. And of course you can drag over or back to the left so that's dragging to the right dragging to the left you have I guess two virtual desktops of course the most common application anybody's going to use on a computer whether it be a standard workstation computer or on a mobile device is of course the web browser and it looks like we're going to use the chromium web browser here 
And let me launch this. Let's see what version of Chromium we are using. This is an Ubuntu based distribution, so it's not rolling release. So uh, Chromium version 90.0.43. I'm not exactly sure how recent of a version of Chromium that is. And how do you close out Chromium? Well, we did have the uh, close buttons on Chromium, but being that this is for a mobile interface, a lot of applications I don't think will have any kind of window direct decorations that you would traditionally click on with using a mouse, right? It's designed for touch. And on a mobile device, what you would do, I think, is just drag these out of the way. No, dragging from the top gets you your notifications, and dragging back up swipes them away. But if I click on the dock down here, assuming this is my finger, I believe the applications yeah, just disappear. They don't actually appear in the dock, but they do go away. Other than the browser and the calculator, we have our calendar app, we have a clock app, we have a media player, we have a MPV media player, so we have two different media players. So what is this one? I, I know what MPV is, but this one here, I am not sure what kind of player this is. It doesn't look like an application that I'm familiar with for Office. We have WPS Office. We have Presentation, Spreadsheets, and Writer. That's interesting that they're going with WPS Office because that is proprietary software. And you would think they would probably try to stick to free and open source software where possible. So I'm not sure why they wouldn't go with LibreOffice or some other free office suite. But WPS Office, I believe the company behind it is also a Chinese based company. So that may have influenced their decision to use the WPS products there. I switch back over to this workspace here. Uh, we have Kirigami Gallery, KDE Connect. Of course, that's to connect your uh, mobile devices. It's for uh, syncing between devices. Uh, Dolphin, so KDE Connect and Dolphin, KSysCard, KWallet. So these are all... Uh, KDE applications, and I'm assuming that is what the desktop environment actually is. It's just a very highly customized KDE. If I uh, open a terminal, and I do have the terminal app docked down here in the dock. I don't, it was not here originally. How I discovered the terminal originally was I just did a Control-Alt-T, because on Ubuntu-based systems, you would expect Control-Alt-T to give you a terminal, and it does. This pulls up console, console with a K, KDE's uh, default terminal application. If I do a uname space dash R, we are running kernel 5.4. So that's an older kernel, but that's an LTS kernel, so it should be very stable. Do we have anything like HTOP installed on the system? No, we don't. It tells us we could do a sudo apt install HTOP or a sudo snap install HTOP because Ubuntu uses uh, the apt package manager. It also has snaps enabled by default. So let's do a sudo apt install htop. Because we do have the uh, KDE system monitor, the graphical system monitor we could look at. But I, I like to use the same tool for every single Linux distribution I take a look at. So it makes sense just to check everything in htop just to make things kind of fair. I gave this VM two threads of my 24 thread thread ripper for the CPU and I gave it four gigs of RAM and it's not really using much CPU as expected. We're not doing much. It is using though a lot of RAM, a lot of RAM, 1.8 gigs of RAM of the four gigs I gave this thing. I also notice we have uh, some Wayland stuff going on. So it is using Wayland as the display server, I guess, where, rather than Xorg. That is interesting. And we have the uh, plasma shell running. Pulse Audio is running. Really, there's not much running. System D, Plasma, a pipe wire is running. That's also interesting. Pulse Audio. Yeah, let me quit out of HTOP. So it's definitely not lightweight, right? This is not going to be a lightweight Linux distribution. But uh, again, this is not for old machines anyway. You, you can tell this is a much more modern touch kind of interface and it's designed for uh, modern machinery of course. If I go to the info center, this is KDE's info center, will it actually tell me what version of Plasma they are basing off of? Yeah, uh, Plasma 5.20.2 so and K KDE frameworks 5.78, the cute version is 5.15.2 and of course we would have got the uh, kernel version as well if I'd uh, just open this program rather than the terminal and closing this program once again there's no window decorations no traditional close buttons or anything so again i'm just going to click down here on the dock and it will go away
Now before we get the notifications by dragging from the top so we can you know, get our notifications, can I dismiss them? I can. Oh, very cool. And then just swipe it back up to, toward the top. I, I will say this actually does work. Like even though it's beta software, I, I really like the interface. Like it's very intuitive. I really didn't read any documentation on how to do anything in this and you don't have to that and that's kind of the design that, that's these mobile designs anyway they're typically very easy interfaces where you just touch something with a finger and it opens and you slide it out of the way when you're done it's got that that traditional kind of mobile interface we do have some icons up here i'm not sure what they do I think I have to drag them. Okay, so we get not notifications here, but this looks like a, I guess, preference settings for Wi Fi, Bluetooth, the Ringer. Of course, this is a VM, but you know, so we're not really going to get any kind of effects. Audio playback. I guess if I was playing something, if I actually had an audio file to play in the media player, it would give us that information here. Brightness. Um, would I actually just open the sound settings here okay so if you click on you know some of the settings it will actually open up your settings manager this is uh the kde settings manager thingy <laughs> for those of you familiar with the plasma desktop i don't use plasma very often so i'm not uh not that familiar with a lot of this but here's where you could change the uh, kde theme uh, right now i'm not sure what theme we're using theme we have choices between air breeze breeze dark breeze light and oxygen let's see if i go to a dark theme will it actually respect that yes it will very cool i think that's really all i want to play with here in the settings we could change the uh, pin for the lock screen if we wanted to and let me click on the dock to make the settings go away. Looking at the applications in the dock, the first one is the settings manager that we just took a look at. That's just another way to get to it. This icon here that has the Jing OS logo on it, I'm not sure what that is. If I click on it, it's our uh, software center, also our update manager. We have 32 updates available. This looks like one of the standard uh, KDE uh, software centers. Is this Discover? I believe this is Discover. I go to settings. No, how about let's go to about. And this is Discover 5.20.80. So it is the Discover Software Center. We can do settings, installed. It did look like when it gave me the 32 updates. I don't know if you guys saw it when I first opened it. There was an error or something. I, mean, I don't know if there was an issue with one of the repositories. But then again, this is beta software. So this is not ready for prime time. This is really more of a uh, preview release and honestly that's really about all i can show you with this i mean it's really just a heavily modified kde plasma desktop except it's simplified right there's not much to it you have two virtual workspaces with some some icons on each workspace you don't have a ton of applications installed by default but you have enough you, you have what you would expect on a mobile interface i've got to say it does look attractive and really once you get the right video drivers working at least here inside vert manager the performance is actually not bad like these these animations and everything they're pretty smooth again considering that this is beta quality software i'm pretty impressed i think once this thing reaches a, a level of maturity where they can put out a 1.0 release i think people will be pleasantly surprised at how good this particular Linux distribution is. Again, I know some people are going to have a problem with it because it is Chinese-based distribution. I don't like the fact that they do include some proprietary applications like the WPS Office Suite when really you probably could have found open source alternatives for that. And again, to at least right now, in order to download the ISO, you actually have to give an email address. You have to give them your email address, and then, then they immediately email you the download link. What I strongly suggest you guys do, again, use a temporary email address for all of that. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. I need to thank Absey, Dallas, Devin, Fran, Gabe, Lou, Corbinian, Mitchell, Akami, Arch, 5530, Chris, Chuck, David, 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 the other David, more Davids, Donnie, Dylan, Gregory, Lewis, Paul, Pick V, I'm Scott, Wes, and Willie. These guys, they are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this first look at Jingo S would not have been possible. I also need to thank each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen, these are all my supporters over on patreon because we don't have any corporate sponsors here at distro tube this channel is sponsored by you guys the community and if you'd like to support my work look for me over on patreon all right guys peace